In this video, I'm going to use this moth to create a brush. So the first thing is I'm going to take, and I first want to fix the feeler. So I'm going into Procreate. I um, import the file. And then what I need to do is make a selection of the filler and copy it. So I go to the selection tool at the top. I then select around the area with my finger or with a stylus. Tap the little button or the what spot. I then use three fingers. I pull down and I do a copy. I then create a new layer and again I pull down with three fingers and I paste. I then need to flip it over so I tap the flip button with two fingers I then move it around to where I want it and hey presto, I've got my uh, new filler and I put off the selection. I then save that. I close Procreate and we then go into Photoshop mix. So I use the plus button and I open the latest version. I then go to the cutout button and I use smart. I then rub over the moth to get the pieces that I want. Zoom in to get more pieces. I'm not that fussed if it goes over a bit, I can always delete. Now I change the tool to the eraser. I now go to the brush, I choose the eraser option and I reduce the size of the brush. I go in and I delete all those bits that I don't want. Now I go to the add button, or the plus button, I reduce the brush even more and I bring in those feelers. Take away again bits that I don't want by going to the eraser button. And I go back to the input. You know, I've pretty much got what I want. So I save that and we now go into Eye Colorama. I bring up a square, a blank square, so I choose the one one square. I 
with the biggest resolution because a brush needs to be on a square. So bring in the moth and I make it as big as I can because the bigger it is the bigger the brush will be in the end but I want to not quite make it big enough and I'll show you later why not. So I used the blend there so I did effects blend to bring the second layer in. Now I go to style threshold and I change the sliders at the bottom to get the threshold correct to what I want. I save that and then I'm going to go to what it flow which is a new one um, and I go to number three and I change the sliders quite a lot on this. This is now one of my favorite edges. I use this more than edges actually. You can get some wacky looks with it as you can see here and it's just a case of trying the sliders up and down to see what looks the best. I also decide to use the blend. You'll see those four dots on the right hand side which are the blends and I choose the overlay in the end because I think it would be quite nice to have the brown will be slightly lighter when it's a brush than the black and I save that. I'm now going to go to the picture gallery because I want to show you what iColorama does. It actually puts, if you look very closely at those two moths, it actually puts boxes around it and that's a bug really. It shouldn't create those boxes when it does the threshold. So what you need to do is go back into iColorama, get yourself a square, then you go to Effects, Blend, bring back the moths and you need to just you see I'm making it smaller you can see the box so now you make it a little bit bigger so that you remove the outside also the bigger that you do the moth the better it will be for the eventual obviously you want to make sure it's within the box so there's my first one lined up I save that and then I get up the next one and you can hardly see but there is a, just a slight line there again I make it slightly bigger so that the line is outside the um, bottom layer and I save that Now we go into IC brushes and the choose the photo at the top and I choose the last two. I name this moth. Now if you were to name it the same as a group you've already got an eye colorama then it will add it to it but if it's a completely different name it will create its own group. There's two options now, either to export to iColorama or to email. And if you export, there's no way of actually getting that later. So what I tend to do is email myself those brushes first. Then I know if I have another device that I want to load it onto, I can still use those brushes. So save it first as an email. And I change the subject to make sure it's something useful, like moss, because the actual zip file is just brushes so you don't know what's in it unless you give it a decent subject. You can rename the zip file later when you download it. But I'm just going to cancel out of that for now. I'm not going to bother to email it. So I export it now to iColorama and it goes straight into iColorama and imports it. Now I'm going to bring up a page to start working on and this is a collage that I did a very simple one uh, I just used magazine pieces I didn't even stick them down I just arranged them on a page the bottom piece I actually sanded on a uh, stencil to give it those twirly bits 
So now I go and I get um, my brush and I choose the group and then I choose just the single brush, the first one. And from here, we then increase the size of the brush. And I grab from the bottom and I pull up. But I'm not really happy with this one. So I do an undo. You can undo the last step. Um, and I'm going to try again. Now it's on this manual rotation which is so difficult. And so difficult to get it to stop where you want. Here I am. It's going backwards and forwards. I'm trying to stop it get it in the place that I want it but it just it just moves so I let go and fortunately it's sort of in one that I like but now I decide what am I going to do I think now I'm going to bring up a square I'm going to move that very pattern bit from the top um, and bring it down to the bottom here I'm choosing the single square adjusting the size I'm clicking on the edge actually and there you can see it's gone around and it's got some of the pattern from the other side if you take it right from the edge now what else I think I'm going to try maybe a circle increase the size and I'm going to take it from the bottom piece. Now you'll see, even though the square is there, sorry, I'm going to take it from the top. Even though the moth is there, it will take the background, the piece underneath. It won't actually take anything that you've put on the top. I'm going to get a small circle, put it in the middle. And looking at it, I'm really not happy with it. I think I've decided at this point that I'm going to crop off the top. So I'm going to erase the uh, moth. Remember to take the erase off. And let's go back to the moth brush. And let's try again. Yeah, take a bit of the dark bit. It's better. But again, I've taken that off and let's take the top off and put that on top. I mean, that's very pretty. One of the secrets is taking, uh, making one brush clone and then putting another one on top to give it a, a two-dimensional look. But I think I decide in the end I still don't like that because I want to crop off the top. There's one more try. Now I'm looking at putting something in the corner. Ah, oh, a couple of squares. Now I've decided to delete the moth. I'm going to create the moth again. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and I'm going to do it below the orange because I, I'm going to cut the orange off ultimately. At last I think I've got what I want. And I'm going to do it twice. I'm going to apply that and I'm going to crop it. I'm going to take the top bit off and make it sort of square. I'm going to save that and I'm going to take it into Snapseed. 
I'm going to open it in Snapseed. And let's see, let's start with Grunge. A little bit strong on the texture, so I'm going to just reduce the texture a bit. Then we're going to try the Glamour Glow. Reduce it just slightly. And then we're going to add a frame. Increase the size of the frame. And now I'm going to go back and edit the frame. Take the mask off to see what that looks like. And now I'm just going to bring a bit more of the frame back. And then I decide to rough up the frame a little bit. I don't like what I've done, so I'm going to bring it back a little bit. And that's the result.